Welcome. So today we're going to talk about stress and strain. Stress and strain are functions of mechanics that are very fundamental. We're going to on the left look at stress and the right look at strain and we're going to talk about them a little more. So let's start with stress. Stress has to do with force. Well strain has to do with deformation. So we have force on the left and deformation on the right. Typical units we would have for stress would include pounds per inch squared, kips per inch squared, or newtons per meter squared. There are many other, but what we see here is constant, is it's a force divided by an area. Another example would be pounds per square inch, kips per square inch, etc. On the deformation side, we have units that have to do with length. It turns out that deformation is in length, something like inches or centimeters. But the units of strain are length per length. So it could be inches per inch or centimeters per centimeter. What's interesting about the units for strain are th is that it's unit less. Okay? What we see for both of these is something that we call normalized. So both of these, length divided by length or force over area, is what we call a normalized unit. So stress is normalized force over area, strain is length per length. So let's see what this really means. We typically look at stress and strain as a relationship because they are related. If we have a particular system, let's take this system for example. We have a load hanging from a spring. And so the load is related to stress. So as, as we put a load on here, what's going to happen is the weight is going to get further down. It's going to move down a little bit. And the spring is going to stretch. And the stress is a function of the weight. And when we're talking about stress, we might be talking about the stress in the spring. So we would be looking at the area of the spring, the cross-sectional area of the spring. And so when we look at this, the stress usually uses a symbol of sigma, which is stress. is equal to the force, or the weight, over area. Okay, So depending on how big the spring is, we get different stresses. The strain, on the other hand, is a function of deformation. So this weight is going to move down a distance, delta L, and the spring had an original length of L. And so our strain, we use epsilon, strain, is equal to the change in length over length. So let's see what this looks like if we were to graph it. Again, strain is epsilon, change in length over length, and stress is equal to sigma force over area. And so as we add force to a system, We'll start out at zero strain and zero stress, and as we add force to the system, the stress and strain are going to increase. And there's different ways this could happen. It could be a nice linear relationship. A little bit of stress adds to a little bit of strain, or a little bit of strain adds to a little bit of stress. It could start out increasing that the stress goes up quickly and then drops off. It could start out that it strains or moves a lot and then gets stiffer and any number of these. And these curves, these stress-strain curves, are what we would call a fingerprint for the material. So let's look at a bar under a load P. So we have a bar under a load P. Let's give it a length L. And what we're concerned about when we're talking about area is we're concerned about the, the area perpendicular to the force. 
force. So if we look at a section in the middle of this bar, it's going to have a cross-sectional area of A, and it's under a load P. So if this had a dimension of little a and little b, of course, area would be a times b. Like we said earlier, stress, we can use the symbol F, or we can use the symbol sigma, is equal to the force P divided by the area A. Okay, And you'll note that it's independent, independent of the length. So depend, no matter how long this is, the stress will be the same over the area. Now if the cross-section changed over the area, over the length, that would give different stresses. So we're looking at the stress on this very particular spot. Okay. Now let's look at what's happening with strain. When we pull on something like this, we expect it to stretch. So I'm going to draw our bar stretching out here okay, a little bit. Again, it had an original length of L, and it has deformed or stretched an additional delta L. Okay, And we defined strain is equal to the change in length over the original length. So you'll notice the units go away on that one. So as an example here, if L is equal to 24 inches, and it stretches, the new length is 36 inches, then the strain is the change in length over length is 36 inches minus 24 inches divided by 24 inches, and we get a strain of 0 0.5. Now, for most materials that we deal with, in our, the strains are very small. So the change might be on the order of a fraction of an inch, and the strain would then be very tiny number, like 0 0.003004. On the stress side, um, we could do a similar sort of thing. Let's do the example on the stress side. If P was equal to 100 pounds, and A equals 2 inches, and B equals 2 inches, then the area, A, is equal to 4 inches squared, and the stress, F, is equal to P over A, is 100 pounds divided by 4 inches squared, and I get 25 pounds per inch squared. So, in this is where this is the um, relationship of stress and st strain to forces. In the next video, we'll give some examples of how stress and strain work out.